In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble a Sam's Club griddle and I'll convert it from propane to gas. Additionally, I will give you some reasons why I chose this griddle over a Blackstone. Hi y'all, Don here with Southern Backyard Cooking. In today's video, we'll be showcasing how to assemble my Members Mark griddle that I bought from Sam's Club. I will convert it from propane to gas. I'm going to use natural gas out here. And lastly, I will tell you why I chose this over a Blackstone griddle. If you like my video, please make sure you subscribe and ring the bell. That will allow you to follow my site and get notifications when I upload new videos and all for free. Okay, step one is to unbox the grill. Alright, so I've opened my box and the first thing we're going to have to do is assemble the legs and the, the base structure. So I'm going to pull that out of the box and I'm going to put it up on top of my table so we can do this. Alright, I've unboxed all my parts. I left the actual burner assembly that's all put together in the flat top part of the griddle in the box for right now because I have to assemble these legs in this base assembly. So I have it all to where I have my numbers facing up to where I can see everything. I'm going to end up putting a lot of these parts up underneath here on the shelf until I'm ready to use those. Uh, so the first parts they're going to be used is 14, 21, 13, and 18 and assemble those together. All right, I've got those assembled now. The next steps, I'm going to add, get two of the legs, uh, number 9, 11, and 12, and assemble those together. One thing you want to do when you're doing these, it's all screws. Make sure you get all the screws in before you tighten them. It makes it a lot easier if you put all the screws in, and then once they're all in, tighten them up. Okay, so what those two sections were, the first two, were the ends. Now, I'm going to attach them to number tw number 20 is going to be our bar across okay so i have the ends attached to the base now i'm going to put the shelf in and, and attach it and it's going to attach right in this area okay our next step is to put our locking caster wheels on they just screw right in on this end all right i've got the assembly put together now with my shelf so at this point what i'm going to do is tighten up all the screws all the way around make sure it's nice and sturdy and then I'm gonna put my burner assembly on top alright y'all one of the things I'm not gonna put on is I'm not gonna put the LP tank holder on that, that side over there and the main reason I'm not gonna do that is I'm gonna convert this to natural gas and not use L, uh, propane alright so before I put my handles and my side tables on I'm gonna go ahead and convert this to the natural gas it just makes it easier when everything is off like this. It'll be a lot simpler. So to convert to natural gas, I've just bought this one of these conversion kits. I bought it a Blackstone. It will work. Uh, it comes with everything I need to do it. A hose with a quick disconnect. A quick disconnect to go on my gas. Plus all the fittings and the orifices. Because these orifices have to be... Uh, wider they have to be a, a larger diameter hole all right so we're ready to take the gas burners out to change the orifices out all we have to do is is to take these screws out and pull the gas burners out and then the orifice being down in here and take those out all right I've taken off the burners already and what we're gonna do now is take off the orifice that's down inside there and then we're going to measure it and put on the correct size orifice all right I have the orifices out these are old orifice and this is the new orifice you can see the hole in the new one is a lot larger allows more gas to go through so with the old ones we want to put them in these are two threading uh, gauges and see which one it'll thread into that one kind of sticks yeah there we go this one goes right in so this one is and you can barely read it it's a 
0.75. So in the orifices, you have a whole bunch of them, but basically we're going to use these M M6 by 0.75, and that's what I've got already out here. Here's my new my my four new ones. Now one of the things it tells us to do is to use some joint compound to put on these so they'll seal. And you want to make sure you use a uh, high temperature that goes to at least 400 degrees. And this one does. So what I did was I just put a little bit of that joint compound, and I mean a little bit, and spread it around on the threads. Now I'm going to put those back into the... These are the new orifices. So I'm going to put those back into the griddle and tighten them. I don't want to over tighten them. All right, now I got those in there. I'm going to put the burners back in. This is the top. The bottom doesn't have those holes. So I'm just going to take it, go into the side, and go in. This is our starter. Line them up with the holes. Put our spacers back in place when I do this I'm gonna okay I got these back in these are our channel what this does is allow gas to go from one to the next to the next so all I have to do is have a starter on this first one this is a push button uh, it's actually when you turn the knob it generates electricity a uh, little spark uh, unlike Blackstone. Blackstone uses a battery to create that spark. I like this a lot better. And now I'm just going to tighten these screws down. Alright, so all I have left for my conversion is I need to take this regulator off for the LP gas and put on the hose for natural gas. Okay, I got the hose off. So what I want to do now, wipe it up a little bit. I want to just add a little bit of this pipe joint compound. That way it seals it very well. Alright, now I'm just going to screw my flare in on it and then I want to tighten it down. Don't over tighten. Okay, so on this side we got a quick, di quick disconnect and here's one to go on the gas line. All right, so I have my two side tables put together. These are a little loose, so I can match them up with the sides here. I'm gonna go ahead and put them on the sides. So I attach the grease drip tube here to a catch pan, which makes it nice and convenient. It's all right up there. Right, I've got the griddle upside down. This is the this is the one thing I like most about this particular griddle is comes with these leveling stocks so I'm going to screw them all the way in all right so with these leveling stocks what this does for us is it actually allows us to level the griddle wherever it's set uh, unlike the blackstone the blackstone does not have any kind of leveling devices at all there are people that have rigged things up like putting washers up underneath it but this is a system that's already built into it, and it's very nice. So I'm going to put the other one on, and then I'm going to turn it over and actually place it up on top of the frame. All right, so I've got my leveling blocks on. Uh, they're not tight or anything. Uh, they're real loose. So what I'm going to do is take it, pick it up, and turn it in. I'm going to put the one edge in first, and then work it around. So I want to hit the hole. And there we go. All right, y'all. So I have my trusty level, and I've already leveled it, but it is perfectly level this way in, in all kinds of directions. That way it'll be lay in the oils and water or liquids, anything won't puddle on me. The things I have left to do is I need to peel off these stickers. I want to wipe it down real well. A couple of real nice things that I like that comes with this uh, Sam's Club model is it already comes with a scraper. I don't have to go buy one. And it comes with a cover that'll cover the whole unit. That prevents rust and 
water and liquids getting into it. Now, I told you before that I would end up covering some of the things that I like about this griddle versus the Blackstone. First thing, this one is $199. Real good price. Uh, it's four burners, 60,000 BTUs. That is the same as a Blackstone. The best thing about this one, it has the stainless steel front and it has the drip tray right in the front. The Blackstones either have it off to the side here in the front or off to the back. The other thing I like about it is the hole for the drip tray. Those that have it in the back, my best friend has got one of those and every time we've used it I end up doing two things. One, so much of the grease, depending on what we're cooking, goes out the back and I can never see the, the bucket that it goes in that it overfills and the dogs really love it because they have a field day with it. But more importantly is when I'm cooking, because it's just open from here to here, is half the time I'm dropping and sliding food off where here we have a solid back. I, I don't have a problem. Here in the front we have a smaller hole, so a lot of my food, especially when I'm cooking vegetables or anything you know, that's bigger than the size of a quarter, it's not going to go through there. That's real important to me. I don't like losing food off to the edges. The best thing I like about this particular griddle more than anything else is the leveling feet. Uh, I hate trying to cook something and the food is sitting in a bunch of oil because it's unlevel and it puddles over to that one side, front, back, rear, wherever, and it's really it's not a good way to cook. Uh, I don't like to cook in a lot of oil, so I don't want a lot of my grease just laying here or puddling over to an area. As I'm cooking, I like to scrape that excess oil, that excess grease, off and into my trap. One of the things you may be interested if you like this one is I have a video about the seven mistakes you don't want to make while using a pedal grill. Alright y'all. I really hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please make sure you subscribe, ring the bell so you can get notifications. Remember, all this is free, no charge to you at all.